Today in the Pedal Vault, the Palma Pocket Amp. The Palma Pocket Amp is, well, a pocket amp. Um, this means it's a preamp as well as a cap simulation, and it's actually no power amp included. We have four control knobs with drive, level, treble, bass, and four switches. This one lets you choose the amp. You have the option of Tweet, Brit, and US. Here is the mode, uh, aka Gain clean crunch heavy and here we have the mic placement for the speaker cabinet we have classic center or off axis and we have a ground control if you have any noise issues due to the ground then we have this foot switch although i think you need some really tiny feet i don't think it is meant to be used in your pedal board it's more or less uh, well, uh, for home recording or home uh, practicing. Then we have a phone's output that's really cool. You can use your headphones with it. Here we have the input and on the front we have the power connection and aux in, really cool. And we have a um, jack output and an XLR output. And this is meant to be used for your amp and with this, you can go directly into your interface, for instance. Lots of people say that this is actually a clone of the Sansam GT2, and the controls are really similar, so I think it is, although other guys say it's not, or they are different, but a clone doesn't have to be a perfect copy. So, let's find out how the EQ curve looks. So with this setup, this is tweet, clean, and classic. We have a huge high cut, huge low cut, and a huge dip at 1.3K. And sadly, you can't deactivate the cap simulation. Therefore, I'll toggle through the mic placement, first of all. So classic looks like this. Center is basically more pronounced. And off axis has reduced highs. So let's stay at classic. Now the different amp settings because they are quite different. Tweet, this. Brit is a huge boost in the mid frequencies. And US has an additional boost or shelf around the 500 hertz region. So when we activate the different modes, the volume becomes lower, but that's due to the added compression. And with heavy, some more highs are introduced. And this is actually the case for all the amp models. Although with the tweet setting, we get some additional volume here. Okay, let's stay at the tweet and clean setting and add some drive. Drive is also volume boost. Well, who could have guessed? Treble. around the 3.5k. You can do some drastic cuttings here. And bass. Seems to be a shelf around the 200 hertz. 
and you can do some hefty cuttings as well. Now let's try out the Brit if this is the same. And it basically is, although here it seems to be more effective, at least in the second half. I'm actually not used to have an EQ on a Marshall simulation that is this effective. And for US, I think this is a mess of boogie. It works the same. So now let's find out how this thing actually sounds.
Because I played the Palmer Pocket Amp through the XFX for the audio playthrough or the audio testing, I thought for the live review part just Palmer Pocket Amp into interface. Therefore my signal chain is as simple as it can be, guitar into Palmer Pocket Amp into interface. No cap simulation, nothing, no plugin, just this pedal. And this is the bypassed sound. And now let's activate it and get an actual cool heavy tone. So the MIG position uh, center is my favorite. <sighs> or well, I think the the treble is, is, is too harsh when I crank it too far, so I have to uh, really be cautious. And if I use the US or the Brit, 
it doesn't make such a huge difference. I think it has a bit too less gain for my taste, at least in this context, maybe in an, a band context it's enough. But I think this is the best sound, maybe. <laughs> start with the things that I don't like about the pocket amp. I don't like that the cap simulation can't be turned off. That's a bummer because I think without a cap emulation this would sound much better into an actual amp. I also don't like that I don't have any mid control. I mean technically there is some kind of mid control because of the different mic positions or the different how it's called uh, modes but or and the amps of course but all in all it's it's not as good as I want it to be. And well if I just use the pocket amp without any amp afterwards or any gear afterwards I think it sounds rather boring. I mean I can come up with a okay sound but it's definitely not my favorite sound. So the intention as a cheap backup rig I wouldn't actually use it because the well the sound isn't up to my standards even for a backup rig. But now the positive stuff. This Thing is really cool if you want to rehearse via headphones because you can simply plug in your phones and you basically get a cool sound especially if you well that should work with some pedals before shouldn't it I think I have to try it and apart from the rehearsing aspect I have to admit that the sound is versatile and in front of an amp I can get cool results. I tend to prefer a crunched amp more than a clean amp, um, but that's my personal taste. However, in front of a clean amp you get a huge variety of tones, in front of a crunch amp the sound differences are more subtle and I don't know if this is enough for you to be satisfied or um, if uh, the actual amp, how much of a difference a different amp makes and if you can adjust to, well, the different tonal aspects your amp has. But yeah, I think that's it. It's not the best pedal in the world, it's not the worst pedal in the world, it's somewhere in between. So now let me know where in between exactly, in your opinion. Or do you own the pocket amp? Or do you own the Sansam GT2? And do you think it sounds similar? Just leave your opinions, thoughts and comments down in the comment section. If you want to support this channel, check out the links in the description. And with this said, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. May the force be with you and have a nice day.